starts right now. 21 seconds of silence. It's a tragedy not forgotten. Tonight, a moment to honor the 21 lives lost. The focus from the football field to a path towards healing. Like it's just happened yesterday. We need some some happiness um, to bring into our lives. We're there as the Uvalde Coyotes host their first home game this season. Neighbors all wearing maroon and white school colors in a show of solidarity. But I am proud that there is a player that wears 21 and what it signifies. And to show off some coyote pride. Here come the coyotes! The stands were packed, emotions running high. This was much more than just a regular football game. In fact, just before this home opener, the team got a special gift from the Houston Texans. The night team's RJ Marquez shows us how it's part of a show of support that's encouraging that community. Coyote pride and Uvalde strong. Those words carry more meaning tonight as Uvalde played its football home opener tonight in front of a packed crowd. The only word I could describe about this community is grit and being resilient and when you born and raised here, it's just about bleeding that maroon and white. As fans walked into the stadium to support the Coyotes, they did it knowing many family and friends are still hurting. It's not the same, and you always kind of feel like a little bit heavy hearted about everything. But win or lose, the team taking the field was a moment to celebrate under the Friday night lights, a small distraction from everything Uvalde has gone through. You know, this town has been through a lot, a lot of heartache and a lot of pain. and. Um, for unfortunate circumstances, you know, but uh, this this town is trying to, um, you know, just trying to create something positive out of this. Roland Ramirez is the head athletic trainer for the Houston Texans and a 1997 Uvalde High School alum. He understands what it means to be Uvalde strong. One heartbeat, one community, um, and they're all here for each other. Everybody knows each other. Everybody supports each other. Uh, that's what this Wally. this town is about. Before Uvalde took the field, Ramirez announced the Coyotes would be going to a Texans game. The organization to be able to do that for, for them and host them for, for the season opener is just is special, you know, and the kids were, kids were excited. An act of kindness for a community still healing. I know it'll be something special and for a, a lot of people, the community and even our opponents showing a, an act of kindness towards us and it'll be something to remember for a lifetime for sure. All right, guys, back out here live at the Honey Bowl where this game has just wrapped up right now. It was a thrilling finish. Uvalde wins in the final seconds, 35 to 28 over Eagle Pass. You could see them walking off the field right now in celebration. And again, guys, it has been an emotional evening here. You mentioned those 21 seconds of silence. They were so quiet here, you could hear a pin drop. But right now, these fans are very excited as football has brought them together to celebrate the community. And again, guys, Uvalde wins their home opener tonight over Eagle Pass win in a thriller. Steve and Stephanie, back to you guys. Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much, RJ. You know, it wasn't necessarily about winning or losing, but just that they wanted just put, it's just the cherry on top. Absolutely. Now, students in Uvalde return to class next Tuesday and districts around San Antonio really want to keep their spirits up. So they're wearing Uvalde's colors, maroon and white. We have a list of participating districts for you on KSAT.com. We're also keeping an eye on the weather situation. Today was fine, but rain chances expected to rise over the weekend. Meteorologist Adam Kasky is tracking that for us tonight. So, Adam, let's talk about timing here when it comes to those rain chances. Walk us through tomorrow morning, tomorrow afternoon. And I actually just updated these numbers a little bit. Now, tomorrow morning, I think predominantly dry. Yes, a few little random and rogue showers out there, 20 to 30 percent. So not much coverage across our area. Then we get into the afternoon, different story. And I think we'll see numerous to widespread showers and thunderstorms after 2 or 3 p.m. Saturday afternoon and early evening. So bottom line, if you're trying to squeeze in a tea time, the earlier the better on Saturday for outdoor activities. Now that said, there will be some showers that miss a few neighborhoods, but we could quickly get a couple of inches of rain uh, in some of our locations around South and Central Texas. So that's Saturday for you. There will be some modifications into Sunday. I'll get into that in a little bit, along with a new tropical storm that's out in the Atlantic and where most of the rain's likely to fall this weekend coming right up. Adam, thank you. Now new tonight, a deadly discovery at the border. After days of heavy rain, the Rio Grande swelled and took the lives of eight migrants trying to cross the waterway. This was near Eagle Pass yesterday. Border Patrol says that the people who were killed were part of a much larger group of 100 people. Agents rescued 37 migrants and detained 16 others. 
Officials in Mexico took 39 migrants into custody. Border Patrol also says that six people were found dead on the U.S. and two others in Mexico. Right now, the Bear County Sheriff's Office wants your help tracking down a truck driver accused of using a flatbed trailer as a battering ram on the highway. It happened near Grossenbacher and Highway 90. The victim who was hit was able to take this picture before the suspect got away. Investigators say the listed address for the truck is actually incorrect. If you know who this is, call the Bear County Sheriff's Department deputies at 210-335-6000. The newest COVID boosters making their way to doctors' offices and pharmacies around the country. Here in Texas, the state health department says the first doses will arrive next week. But will people actually get one? The night team's Camelia Juarez took that question to people right here in San Antonio. If it's recommended, I think you know it's a good way to kind of prevent <laughs> the worst from happening. Health officials warn another wave of infection could spread as vaccine protections wear off. Pfizer's updated booster is available to those 12 and older, while those 18 and older have the option to get the Moderna shot. These boosters target the Omicron variants, which are dominant here in the U.S. I don't want to have COVID and all the negative things that come about it, right? So if the if the vaccinations are available, I want to take advantage of them. Right now, people who have stayed up to date with previous boosters still have some protection. No one really talks about it, so it doesn't feel like you really have to at the moment. But the CDC's director says as long as you are eligible, there's no bad time to get an updated booster. The CDC, the CDC has allocated about 900,000 doses for Texas, as well as 200,000 doses for large retail pharmacies. So that's your HEB, Walgreens, CVS. Camelia Juarez, Quesa 12 News. Thanks, Camelia. And now for a look at your other headlines. In your Nightbeat News Flash, police now need your help finding that 16-year-old girl that you see on your screen, Kathleen Lubin, was last seen on Blanco Key on Wednesday. Investigators say that she has a condition that requires a doctor's care. So if you know where she is, just call police. That number is right there on your screen, 210-207-7660. San Antonio Councilman proposing a plan in the midst of stricter abortion laws in Texas. Parents can surrender a child 60 days or younger to a hospital or fire station, but there may be a negative stigma birth mothers may feel when speaking with officials. So Councilman John Courage says installing specialized boxes, baby boxes would allow the parent to safely drop off the child without speaking to anyone. And the box would alert first responders to the child inside. The city attorney will need to make sure this does not contradict any state laws. And that's a look at your Nightbeat News Flash. Well, we have been following it all day, and certainly we've been following it tonight. The Valley Coyotes part of today's big game coverage. We've got the touchdowns, the tackles, and the field goals coming up in sports. Also, it led to questions about the separation between church and state, and now the deal between a San Antonio school and a church pastor is taking a turn. So we're going to discuss how the school says that it plans to find a solution for everyone. It's next on The Night Beat. Now to a Night Beat update on concerns surrounding a San Antonio school and a church pastor. The deal between them now dashed, but there's still questions. School leaders at Lamar Elementary sent a letter to parents saying that San Antonio ISD and Garden City Church no longer have a formal agreement. There were concerns that Pastor Carl Young wanted the school to depend on his church after renting space there. Now, while the original deal is scrapped, the school did say that it plans to work on a solution that, quote, does not involve a campus-based site, end quote. Administrators are going to get together and discuss this next Tuesday. San Antonio kicking off a three-day weekend. You ready for that? Some people hitting the road, others jumped on a flight to take a quick trip this Labor Day. The San Antonio International Airport saw a bump in the number of travelers with the busiest days expected to be yesterday and today. Cancellations and delays still an issue, especially when weather comes into play. And if you're looking to fill up before hitting the road, 
Gas price is pretty good right now. They're averaging about 320 a gallon in San Antonio, though. Some people have seen it for less than three dollars. Yeah, Two ninety seven. Yeah, and don't forget your traffic authority keeping an eye on the roads this holiday weekend. Just scan the QR code with your phone's camera. It's going to take you to our page with a look at any potential traffic tie ups. You can also check out any road closures right there. All right, and now we're taking a live look over the torch of friendship right there. Just a really nice shot right now, 84 degrees. And we really hope that you guys uh, have an opportunity to spend time with your families this weekend, your friends, because it's just going to be it's going to be a nice weekend. But, you know, you're definitely going to want to keep our weather app handy because you're going to need it if you've got outdoor plans, right? Absolutely. And, you know, enable the notifications. That's what helps out the most. It'll tell you when lightning's a certain distance from you and even if rain is detected nearby your area. So that's always a good thing. And when we go live from the case at 12 weather center, we can uh, go right live right to your phone when needed. Anyway, tomorrow, mainly afternoon showers and storms. Sunday we will still have some scattered activity, but less coverage across our area, so not as numerous and probably lighter in nature. But bottom line, we're going to have some areas of rain every day, Saturday, Sunday and Monday with the highest amounts we think south of San Antonio and south of Highway 90. There's a little bit on the radar screen right now. Not a whole lot to talk about. A lot of what you see there is some ground clutter being detected, but a little downpour there near Blanco in southern Blanco County. That's pushing northward just east of 281. And then you go westward, northern Valverde County. A little bit of activity near Juneau and Devil's River State Natural Area just north of there. Uh, that's a moderate heavy rain. I want to spend some time in the future cast because I think it's a good representation of coverage across our area and when. Tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. Yeah, a few showers possible, mainly hill country. And then we get to the noon hour. Still not a whole lot out there developing on the radar screen. It's afternoon. We're talking 2, 3 p.m. when things should really start to get going. And we'll start to see those storms flaring up, bubbling up, blossoming up across our area, becoming numerous to widespread through the afternoon and into the evening. Now, that doesn't mean everybody's going to get a big soaking, but there will be some neighborhoods that could get a quick couple of inches out of this. No problem. Notice eight o'clock still scattered activity, and then it starts to shrink in its coverage across our area as we get into the evening and nighttime hours. As for the rainfall accumulations, highest amounts likely south of San Antonio, where we could see upwards of five inches south of Highway 90. Really quickly, the tropics, we have Earl now in the Atlantic. Here it is. Or tropical storm Earl likely to do that curve toward Bermuda, the typical curve and turn this time of year. So we have Hurricane Danielle in the North Atlantic, not affecting anybody or anything, just some shipping routes and then tropical storm Earl likely to remain a tropical storm in the days ahead. Forecast keeps it under hurricane strength and veering away from the US. 78 now Uvalde, 81 Kennedy, 84 here in San Antonio. We had a high temperature today of 94 degrees. Tomorrow we start the day at 75, make it to 86 at noon. That should be our high temperature with those increasing rain chances up to 70 percent by four or five o'clock tomorrow. Lesser coverage, but still some scattered activity periodically Sunday and Labor Day and then lesser chances later next week. Adam, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go to Uvalde. Well, yes. we have been saying it all day. This is much more than just a football game. Greg Simmons, Larry Ramirez called it on the live stream. Greg, I watched a lot of your coverage. Yeah. Great job down there and what a game. It turned out to be one of the biggest games, just like we saw in the Alamo Dome. Remember that? This one ended on a 34 to 28 score as well. The other time, Brennan and Steele wound up being 35 34, but what a finish. We got the highlights for you when we come back. Plus, the big game and our big game coverage features the Steel Knights, and it is a very special night for a number of reasons. Plus, the 600th anniversary for the, or I should say, 600th victory for the Uvalde Coyotes when we come back. We're the Steel Night Cheerleaders, and you're watching big game coverage on KSAT 12. Yes, you are. Good evening, everybody, and welcome live to the Honey Bowl in Uvalde. We just got through calling the Coyotes game against the Eagle Pass win Mavericks. What a finish. What a tie. It was 34-28 was the final score decided in the last few seconds. We'll have more on that in just a moment, but first. The big game and our big game coverage. 
They had to go to Cibolo to find this one out for the Steel Knights after knocking off number one Brennan 35-34 last Saturday in the KSAT Pigskin Classic 2022. They had to host one of the state powerhouses Lake Travis tonight. Linoff, Knights up 14-7 in the second, looking for more on Lake Travis, five-yard line. Quarterback Chad Warner rolls out to his right, finds some time, fires to the back of the end zone for Ed Marion Contreras. 21-7 lead, but the Knights aren't done. Warner forced out of the pocket. He's looking, looking, then he throws back across field to Royal Capel. Wide open on the other sideline. He's gone. 59 yards for the touchdown. It's 28-7 steal at that point. They hold on right now. It's in the 435-28 steal. Let's keep going. Powerhouse Austin Westlake making, and it just, by the way, just went final for you, making the trip down to Converse to take on the Judson Rockets. Judson's first possession. They blast off. Quarterback Andres Villagran gets it out to Anthony Evans, who makes a nice grab and turns on the afterburner. 77-yard pitch and catch for Judson. They take the early 7-0 lead, but can they hold on from Converse? No. Westlake wins it 47-14. Elsewhere, Kamalander, the Reagan Rattlers, hosting the Round Rock Dragons here. It is third quarter. Reagan down 31-17, but they're on the Round Rock 7-yard line looking to punch it in, but the ball gets punched out. Justice Lee scoops it up, is gone the other way for a 97-yard scoop and score. That makes it 38-17 Dragons. Let's see how that one ended. 52-31 Round Rock. At Ferris, number 12 Johnson taking on the O'Connor Panthers. First quarter, Jaguars strike first. Running back Lauren Johnson takes a handoff, starts up the middle, then bounces to the outside. Down the sideline he goes. 19 yards out, 7 nothing Johnson. Let's go to the scoreboard to see if that has gone final. Johnson, it has with the win, 38-23. Round Rock over Reagan, 52-31. Lake Travis falling the steal right now, trailing 35-28. And I, I take that back. That has now gone final. And Westlake over Judson, 47-14. Over Gustafson State Stadium, the Warren Warriors hosting the Del Rio Rams. Warren up 7-6. to six, But look to grow that lead. Quarterback Antonio Mesa drops back, throws in the end zone for the Darien Holmes. What a perfect pass. It makes it 14-6. Warren, let's check the final. Gus, it is 35-15. Warren. The Blue Crew pumped up for tonight's matchup between MacArthur Bramers, Holmes Huskies. Bramers up 7-6 when we arrived, but the Huskies bite back. Quarterback Isaac Martinez finds Steven Claybon in the flat. He turns it up the sideline, takes to the Mac 20-yard line. Very next play, Martinez drops back to pass, fires in the end zone for Christopher Geller for the touchdown. The Huskies miss the extra point. 12-7 Holmes. Did Mac make a comeback? The final from the Heroes. It is 42-33. MacArthur. Clemens Buffalo's on the road in Del Valley. You take on the Cardinals. Third quarter. Clemens up 14-7. Turn up the defense. Trevion Smith flies in for the quarterback sack. Forces a fumble. The ball rolls in the end zone. Ocean Zuniga is there to fall on in. It's 21-7 Clemens. Let's go to the scoreboard for that final now. Clemens over Del Valley, 35-13. That is now in, updated for you, 42-13 in the fourth. Roosevelt falls to East Central, 34-23. Warren over Del Rio, 35-15. Holmes over MacArthur. I should say reverse that. MacArthur gets a win, 42-33. Over in the 0-9, the Brackenridge Eagles and Alamo Heights take on the Mules. The Mules on the Brack 20-yard line. Quarterback Conley McKenna hits Michael Terry, the third on a hot route. Terry makes one move to the outside. Makes the defender fall down. Terry takes it all the way home for the 7-0 lead. The final from Alamo Heights, 56-23 Heights. Over at the Rock Pile, Jefferson taking on Lanier. The Bokes had something to cheer about as they were up 7-0. Going to add to that lead, Lanier on the Jefferson 11-yard line. They go to the ground game. Running back Jeremiah Wezar bursts up the middle. Hurdles one defender on his way to pay dirt. The Bokes lead grows to 14-0. The final from Alamo, 36-6 Lanier. Burbank versus Sam Houston at the SAISD Sports Complex. Sam Houston with the ball down 21-6 in the fourth. Looking for a comeback. Running back Naquintus Brooks. Bounces off one defender, then cuts back to the inside, races for the end zone. They go for two. They get it, make a one-score game. Can they complete the comeback? Let's go to the scoreboard to find out. Highlands over McCullum, 27-10. Alamo Heights over Brackeridge, 56-23. Lanier over Jefferson, 36-6. And Burbank beats Sam Houston, 24-14. Over at Southside ISD Stadium, the Cardinals hosting the Bulldogs of Somerset. First possession, third and long for Southside. Quarterback Gary Hernandez takes a snap, and it's a quick pass out to the flat to take Jake Montoya, who then pitches it back to Ruben Alanis on the hook and ladder. Alanis is blazing down the sideline, foot race to the end zone. No one's going to catch him. 79-yard touchdown for Alanis. 7-0 Cardos. Can they hold on the final 23-14? Those summer set. It was the Dragons of Southwest taking on the Tigers of Floresville. The Dragons are down 21-0 in the fourth, but don't quit. Southwest on the Floresville four-yard line. Tyson Shavsed Dean takes the pitch, is racing to the corner of the end zone, just gets there for the score. Southwest cuts the lead down to 14. Let's check the final from Dragon Stadium, 21-14. 
Floresville. Central Catholic Buttons on the road. Edgewood Veterans Stadium to face Memorial Minutemen. Buttons force the Minutemen to go punt on their first possession. Awaiting the kick is Michael Manhew. He lets it take a bounce, grabs it at the 25-yard line, makes a cut to the far sideline for the same daylight and slips out of one tackle. Then another finds a seam. Gone. 75 yards to the house to make it 7-0. The Buttons would take a 20-0 lead in the first quarter. Let's go to the scoreboard to check that final. Central Catholic with a huge win, 48 to nothing. Somerset over Southside, 23-14. Floresville over Southwest, 21-14. Sotomayor falls to South Sand, 31-17. Curveville Tivy on the road. Take on Davenport Wolves. First quarter, no score, but the Wolves are on the hunt there. Quarterback Trison Hamlin. Play action pass over the middle to Dante Singletary. Strides into the end zone. 24-yard touchdown. Makes it 7-0 Davenport. Back to the big game coverage scoreboard for that final and more. Davenport with the win over Tybee, 31-28. Harker Heights over Smithson Valley, 27-13. Their first loss of the season after their big win in the KSAP Pigskin Classic. San Marcos is leading right now. Well, that's tied. Sam Marcus and Madison have tied it all up at 24 all. And Bernie over Pleasanton, 41 to 7. We are just getting started. Up next, we have much more to come. Big game coverage road trip, which is right here in Uvalde. More highlights, more scores. And but first, we are going to listen to the Veterans Memorial Marching Band. <laughs> What a fantastic road trip tonight. Just one game here in Uvalde at the Honey Bowl where the Coyotes had a thrilling victory against CC Win. Greg and myself called the game. It was awesome from start to finish. I'm telling you what, I'm still pumped up from it, folks. Let's get to those amazing highlights. Standing ovation at a packed Honey Bowl as they honor the 50th anniversary of the 1972 state championship team. Coyotes down 7-0 in the first, but they fight back. Brody Carnes drops back and launches deep to Jarrett Hernandez in the end zone for the 20-yard touchdown, and this game is tied at 7-0. Uvalde climbs on top here when Chris Rodriguez takes the direct snap with a full head of steam, powers his way in the end zone on the 9-yard score to make it 14-7 Coyotes. Fourth quarter now, tied at 28. Coyotes, Coyotes, pardon me, on the prowl, first to go from the 7, 17 seconds to go. Brody Carnes takes the snap. He looks left and fires to the end zone for Devin Franklin, who makes a sweet one-handed catch for the score. That's the game winner, folks. Uvalde wins it 34-28. You know, we've been up real early with another interview with Good Morning America, and, you know, we still came out here and we fought. We fought our hardest, but we never gave up, and, you know, that was just what this town needed. And these needed this win. Fantastic game from the Coyotes and number 21, Justin Rendon, of course, wearing 21 to honor those 21 victims, Greg. And if you don't mind finishing up with some scores Absolutely. here. Absolutely. So here's some scores we have for you. Jay beat Medina Valley 35-16. Victoria East beat fell to New Braunfels Canyon, pardon me, 55-29. Wagner and Dripping Springs is our next scoreboard, I believe, and I have Dripping Springs winning 37-7. Kennedy beat Lytle tonight, 27-13. Blanco fell to number 11, Antonian, 24-16. Shiner St. Paul edged out TMI, 38-35. Robstown and YML Lay is 28-6 in the fourth quarter, according to my tablet here. Sachs over Dilly, 29-13. Canyon Lakes Six, Fredericksburg zero. That game was suspended in the second quarter due to weather and lightning delays. Number two, Poth, 141 to nothing. Number one, Cuero beat Navarro 40 to 13. And Wimberley beat Piper 35 to nothing. And that's a good night <laughs> from Uvalde. Awesome. Awesome Crazy. job. Thank you. <laughs> Great job, guys. Thanks for bringing us all that action and emotion from Uvalde tonight. Yes, and I love that this happened for the people of Uvalde here yeah. too tonight. Yeah. Awesome. We'll be right back after this. All right, we're about to start our weekend. We hope you're already enjoying yours and that you have a great Labor Day weekend. Especially with your families. Have a wonderful weekend, and we'll see you on Monday.